Hello, welcome to episode number two of What Bike Next, in which I, Michael Mann, go head to head with him, Simon Hargreaves, to find a bike social member their very next bike. And you never know, we could be doing the same for you. Thank you once again to Pirelli for sponsoring this video. And today we're at Superbike Factory here at Donington Park to try and help bike social member Bob Allen find his next bike. So welcome Bob to Superbike Factory. Welcome to What Bike Next. Thank you. What Bike Next, what brings you here? I've got to decide what I want next. Yeah. I, don't, I don't off. Ooh. Um, okay. So it's like now I've got to think. I've got to think about what bike I had next. I detect but... a theme here with what bike next. Yeah, I hope we're not <laughs> starting something now. Can we ask what happened? Yeah, uh, I was having literally. It was actually supposed to be my last ride on at Honda Goldwing, eight, two, 2018 tour. Oh, okay. Lovely bike, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. But I bought it thinking, okay, this will be my last bike. And then my wife decided to hang up her boots. So it was like, oh, a bit of a waste. Yeah. So I thought, right, I'll have one more tour on it. I went out for a long weekend. Uh, I literally got not even halfway around my tour, and a car hit me, oh, just like that. No. I mean, how you don't see a Goldwing, I don't know. No, I suspect the car came off worse, <laughs> hitting a Goldwing. His was drivable, mine wasn't. Oh, OK, <laughs> right. Oh, is, it is it written off, Bob? It has been written off. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so where are we then in terms of your biking career? I mean, have you ridden much? Have you ridden... I've been riding Goldwing? bikes since before I could ride them on the road. We right. used to start off-road. Well, Post-Goldwing, what are you thinking? Because that was going to be your last bike. That was going to be my last bike, because it would be a tour. No, it's not your last bike anymore. It's not anymore, no. And your partner doesn't <laughs> want to ride you anymore. I want a bike now that can just like go to work on... It's only like 16, 18 miles, but it's all back roads. It's brilliant. Nice. But I want a bike I can jump on and go out. Obviously, getting the Goldwing out was a bit of a haul. Mm. Um, something a bit more convenient. But I want something that, you know, I'm not bothered about tour, but I need to be able to do short tours in it. Because I mean, I'll either go on tour with my son or with friends from the, uh, the T-Van and bike clubs. Are you open to anything? You said adventure bikes. Are you still open to tours? Are you still open to something a bit more retro, a bit more? Yeah. Has it got I, to look good? This is the dilemma I've got. What do I want now? It's got to be reasonably comfortable. I'm not bothered about a pillion. Um, and uh, yeah, the retro style is nice, but so is the adventure type style sit up. I guess the burning question then for Simon and I, we've got a lot of information now. We can probably start having a look around, seeing what's yeah. what, but what's your budget? Uh, I'll go up to about 9K. I don't want to spend as much as I spent on the Goldwing. <laughs> What do you reckon, Si? Have we got enough there? I think we've got enough there to go, and we've certainly got plenty of bikes at Superbike Factory oh, no. to have a wander around, so I think we should wander around and pick some. Let's see if we can find Bob his next bike. Bob's going to test ride three used bikes we think might suit him best. One chosen by me, one chosen by Simon, and then a mystery bike chosen by Superbike Factory's sales expert, Andrew Widowson. Then at the end, we're going to find out which bike Bob prefers, and hopefully we'll have answered the old question, what bike next? Bob will be testing our three bike choices on the what bike next test route. The route is around an hour of riding, taking in the twisty roads in South Derbyshire, as well as a mixture of A's, B's, in town and out. Plenty of riding time for Bob to get a feel for his next bike. Simon, Bob, we've chosen your three bikes. Yes. I'm going first. This is my bike. Should we take the covers off? Absolutely, come keen? on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, 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 oh there you go. yes. Oh, that's a good reaction. Boxer. Yes, so it's an engine you're familiar with. Yeah. But with a retro style. Mm. So have you ever thought about the R90 Urban GS before? Has that been a bike? I've actually had them looking at them. Ah, okay. And it's like, oh, what's it going to be? Do, do I like that? But the style is good. It and is I, good. I love the boxer engines. So this bike then came out in 2017, I think it was, the Urban GS. This is a 2018 model, I think. Yes. Yeah. And this is up for £8,900. Right. Um, I'm not sure how many miles it's got on. It's probably, it doesn't look like it's done many, to be perfectly it honest. It does, does it? No, it's very clean. But I was thinking, what I was thinking was the retro style. It is, yeah. But you're familiar with the engine? Yeah. Okay, it's not a touring bike. Loads of accessories, so you could get some saddlebags for it, all that kind yeah. of stuff. Not really a two-up machine, but that's not bothering you. So you could Doesn't do matter. a few miles. 
heated grips. Oh, well, that's a good sign. Bit of basic traction control, so a bit of electronic. And it's also got that kind of slightly off-roady vibe. I think, I think BMW in the original press release called it Rustic Enduro. Rustic Enduro. So there you go. Yeah, but your... you won't be enduring. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you excited, keen to ride it, keen to try Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah, definitely. Excellent. This is brilliant. Well, let's see if bike number one can win Bob over. Or will that Boxer Twin be a little too familiar? Limey, would you look at that? What a beautiful thing to behold. Bob and the Beamer are a match made in heaven. So, the Urban GS was launched in 2017 alongside the R90 Racer, and it very much pays homage to the great, 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 great granddaddy GS, which is the R80 GS from 1980. So it's got the red seat, it's got the two-tone blue on the alpine white tank, it's got the fork gaiters, off-road mudguard, the single headlamp. But unlike the original, which made 50 bhp, the GS is powered by the 1170cc R1200 GS motor, making 110 horsepower. And this Urban GS, which is a 2018 bike with only 3,000 miles from new, sir, up for £8,887, has a few modern luxuries as well. It has a chrome exhaust, LED indicators, and also comes with heated grips, ABS, and BMW's basic traction control. But enough of all that. I mean, just look at it. I'm telling you, the Urban GS is a future classic, which is kind of ironic because it's a copy of a classic. But I've got this what bike next in the bag. Bob is going to be utterly smitten by it. All right, Bob, you had a chance to ride the Urban GS then. You followed Simon around for a bit. Tell me, what are your first reactions? Really surprising. Really surprising. In a good way? It's like riding an old friend, the boxer engine. It was brilliant, it was really good. Nice to be back on one. And this is totally different to anything else that I've ridden. Luckily, the roads are good and it's dry and uh, we had a good ride. What do you make of the riding position? When you first started, you said, oh, it might be a little bit forward, but it isn't. And the, the, your legs are bent, but not as much as you think they were. OK. You know, you, you sat up, you get the wind on your chest, but you get nothing on your helmet, which is quite surprising. So is this a bike you think you could do a few miles on? Oh, you can easy. It's comfy as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not too bad at all. Plenty of room to move around on the seat. You know, it was, it was good. What about the height of the seat? Because 8, 850 mil, this one, and you, I know one of your was, concerns Is was, it that high? Yeah. It's not. <laughs> right. I was surprised good. actually. It's very narrow, both, I suppose. It's narrow, yeah. and so my both feet were flat on the ground, and it was fine. So I was surprised. I thought it was lower than that. So, in terms of the bike fitting into your lifestyle, because that's, that's the kind of thing we're looking at here, isn't it? I mean, do you think yeah. you, you were talking about a bit of commuting maybe, but a little bit of touring still, yeah. but also it's got to look good in the garage? I mean, I think I'm ticking all the boxes here. You, you, I think you, it's very close. Oh, he's cagey. <laughs> very he's close. Cagey. It does. It looks good. And as you said, it, even sat in the garage, it looks pretty good. Oh, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. A nice bike. So, it actually has value even while you're not riding it. Very important with a bike. Possibly, yes. <laughs> Shall I quit riding? Right now. <laughs> Come on, Bob, we've got two more choices. Do you want to have a look at it? I've got my choice inside. Should we go there next? Absolutely. I want Come to see on. what it is. Come on. <laughs> Bob, my choice now, bike number two. Got to go some. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I've got a challenge now, haven't I, really? You obviously don't mind a bit of speed. You've obviously asked for something with a not too tall. Mm. Bit of power, probably. Yeah. Which would be pretty, pretty good as well. I know what your budget's like. So, how about. One of these. You ready? Yeah. Whoa. Oh, it's blue. <laughs> Yamaha. A Yamaha wow. MT10. I didn't expect that. <laughs> wow. It's almost like, is it a sports bike? No, I well, don't know. But it's, it's, it is, it isn't. It's got, it's obviously got raised bikes. It's, it's R1 yeah, yeah. derived, so the chassis and the engine are based on the R1. Yes, it makes 158 horsepower or so. Yeah. This is a 2016 bike, so it doesn't have the quick shifter, mm. but it's got 5,000 miles on the clock. That's low. Two owners from new, yeah. and it's, only, it's a shade over eight and a half grand. Right. What do you no reckon, choice. then? Should we go out and have a go? Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Will bike number two be what Bob was dreaming of, or is it a little bit too raucous? OK, so I could have played it safe with a sports tourer, but I wanted Bob to step out of his comfort zone, which is why I went gung-ho with the MT-10. The headline features are, of course, its R1-derived engine and chassis, with the claimed 158 brake horsepower and its aggressive styling too. Yes, the MT-10 is more than capable of going bonkers when provoked, 
However, beneath its wild exterior lurks a remarkably practical machine. Seriously. A major reason for the MT's unique look is the fact that Yamaha purposely designed it to be an all-rounder. On the go, the screen is remarkably effective, its seat is comfortable and the riding position upright and relaxed. It's an all-day machine, but is only really limited in its comfort when you up the pace to motorway speeds. And the engine is suited to this lifestyle too. The CP4 Crossplane Inline 4 is a beauty. It's been retuned for more low and mid-range go, and it still has a delightful offbeat sound and feel that you get with the Crossplane, not to mention its smoothness on a constant throttle. There are little vibes and bags of grunt as soon as you touch the accelerator. While at low speed, some riders think it's a touch too eager on the gas, while others love that MT's spirit and fiery nature. So Bob, we've been out for the ride on the MT-10. How did you find it? Very different. Very, Very different. different, okay. The engine is absolutely incredible. It spins so quickly, so it was, good. It was great. I mean, there's lots and lots of extra power there. Riding position slightly different to the R9, yeah. but still comfortable. On the R9, you can move back and move around the seat a lot more. It's a bit narrower. Uh -huh. Despite this having actually a lower seat than the R9, yeah. this was like, seemed higher. Mm -hmm. But I think the engine is, the, is what this bike is yeah. all about. You, you could, you could, I mean, we had it in, uh, in traction control on two, and it's still like awesome in there. And the riding modes as well. Did you change any of those? I think you no, I didn't. Well, the I standard left it on, mode. Uh, standard. Yeah. It was, uh, it was good. I mean, the roads are a bit muddy, but it was brilliant. It was a nice ride. Uh, different to the R. Its biggest highlight is the engine, isn't it? It's, it's well, really it, thrilling. It is, that engine, it's just incredible. Yeah. I, I was amazed by it. Really was. It was good. You're never too old for that engine. You're never too <laughs> old for it's that just, engine. It's mega, because it does that. It does that, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah you'll yeah. never get tired of it. It's, it's incredible. OK, on to bike number three now. And this is our mystery bike, because it was chosen by Superbike Factory's Andrew Widowson. He's a sales expert here. Let's see what he's got to say about it. So my name's Andrew Widowson, and I work at Superbike Factory Donington Park. The bike that I've chosen is something quite special for Bob. Um, just looking at his requirements, it'll have all the bells and whistles that he needs. Loads of low down torque, you know, plenty of power. TFT display, uh, ABS, traction control, a lot of oomph for the money that you pay. And uh, I think he's really gonna love it. Bob, it's time for the mystery bike. It, it's a mystery. Who's saying it's a mystery? Who's that? <laughs> Toya Wilcox, come on, yeah. come on. Where were you <laughs> in the 80s? Time. Let's get it out, shall yeah. we? Let's okay. get it out, come on. This is gonna be a mystery for everybody. It's orange. It's the 890. It's the KTM. KTM. Oh, wow. It's the 890 Adventure. Yeah, it's the 890, yeah. Wow. And back, top box. Oh, and an aftermarket screen. Look at the size of that. What, we can get this inside the budget. It's a 21 plate. Yeah. That's well, like we... last year. Yeah. Quite a canny choice, actually, because the rear views of these are pretty good. Yeah. This yeah. is an 890cc parallel twin, makes uh -huh. about 100, yeah. 105 horsepower. Mm. That is well specced. I mean, this yeah. thing's got the full suite of electronics, it's got your cruise controls and your. Yeah. Has it got heated grips? No, uh, probably not. Easy enough to fit them. <laughs> and your top box as well. It'll have stuff like corner and traction control in it, yeah, won't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. MTS, yeah, yep. Wow. Well, that's a lot of bike. That is a lot of bike for your money. It's going to be a difficult choice, this one. <laughs> They've got three very, very different bikes. They are. Yeah, yeah, three, are. three distinct yeah. categories of bike. All right, Bob, let's yeah. come find your helmet. Taking the 790 and increasing the capacity up to 889cc by boring and stroking it was one way to increase power and torque back in 2021. And the power increase for the LC8C Parallel Twin saw it climb to the top of the middleweight adventure tree. With a 21 inch front wheel and 18 inch at the rear, you'd expect the KTM to be more at home on the gravel tracks than hugging apexes. But it's 20 litre saddlebag style fuel tank keeps the weight and therefore the centre of gravity low. And it's said to offer a range of around 250 miles. A fancy full colour TFT dashes where your four riding modes can be adjusted. And it's accompanied by a six axis IMU, which also means the bike is equipped with cornering ABS. The quick shifter isn't fitted as standard and only the rear suspension is adjustable. And that's for preload. However, this 210 kilo, 815 mil seat height Austrian is about as versatile as they come. So Bob, what did you make of the mystery bike, the 890 Adventure? 
you know, it was actually quite nice. Oh, oh, <laughs> this okay. is going to be difficult. Because this seat, even though you're high up, I've got the balls on my feet, it's not intimidating at all. It's brilliant. Okay. Uh, the weight, obviously, is a lot lower down, cause, and that makes it thing. You get hardly any wind buffeting. It's brilliant. It's actually quite good. Uh -huh. uh, but this seat is actually the comfiest of all of them. Oh, it okay. Really, and you've still got room to move, slide backwards and forwards. It's if you a needed to. long seat. There's it's a long seat. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't think you need to. It is so comfortable. Yeah. It's brilliant. It's got different modes it's got cruise control on it it's got hand guards on it wow it's, you know okay. it's, it's, it's nearly there a bit of it? everything it's definitely the most modern of the three yeah and it and with the tft dash and all the modes and the electronics and right, yeah. does that count is that is that favorable for you not necessarily no this this is enough power yeah for what you want around the, the lanes and that and a bit more to overtake but you've got to change down a bit and rev it a bit yeah. more once you rev it it's great how did that feel riding an adventure bike uh, it was nice actually because you, you're, you're taller up, you've got that high road sense as well from, from looking forwards. It's just really interesting because I really can't read what you like and what, what, how, where you are and all this. It's going to be fascinating to sit down and this, have this a chat. Is, this, is, this is why I've got this big problem of what do I really want. This is really nice. Bob, let's go and, let's go and grab a coffee, we'll have yeah. a little of a, of a... Sit down, yeah, all right. have a chat. Well, we've had a chance now to uh, sip on your brew and, and have a little think about the three bikes. You are, obviously must be very good at poker because you've come back in after each ride and you've gone, oh, I like that, it's lovely. And well, you've, got, was, yeah. you've listed off these pro points for each one. Got a good reaction to the BMW. The initial reaction was good. Oh, yeah, when you whipped the covers off. Yeah, yeah. you look, yeah. I actually felt quite at home on the BMW. Out of all three of them, it felt the most comfortable, as in suiting me, I think, where I'm going forwards now. You know, it was it was nice to ride, easy to ride, and it just felt really at home on it. And it sort of woken up, yeah, that this is something what I want like that, all that style. When you look forward to what you're going to be doing in, in your motorcycling, yeah. whether it's that, that commute you talked about or whether it's you know, going out on a Sunday, it, it, does it fit? It sounds like it, it does. It instilled confidence more than anything in that. And that, that one bike out of all three of them, it was just like chuck it on the bend. It was brilliant. Take it easy, going through the town, it was dead easy, not, not awkward. My only concern was that but knowing that you knew what a flat twin was like, that, that it was going to be a bit too familiar. I was playing it too safe. I, I suppose your choice was a bit more... Well, it was, it was definitely left field, wasn't it? When we took the covers off the Yamaha, you, you eyes nearly fell out of your head, but it a bit was... like when you use the accelerator on that yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. The, the engine on that is ballistic. It's incredible. And, and, and that's what it's about. And I think... If I was to look at what I was riding and, and riding today, um, it was a bit, maybe a bit too much sporty in for what I want to do. In you terms know, of its I'm, performance? Yeah, I think performance wise, I'd rather sporty. sporty. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just like the engine is just blisteringly quick and revs so quick. Didn't expect that at all. It was quite a surprise to actually have a go on that one. What about the looks of it? Because the, the R9T um, GS is very, uh, apart from the dynamic of the bike, the actual bike looks great in your garage. It's a good looking thing. Yeah. I think we can agree that. Yeah, yeah. MT10 is slightly more devices, slightly more Marmite. You know, some people love them and certainly when they accessorise them, they can look um, mm. extremely ornate, shall we yeah, say. Yeah. But, but uh, how do you think about the looks of the bike? Did that feel it's, like... It's quite angular. I mean, it's a bit like the uh, Suzuki's that that you've got now, the GSXs as well. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's more modern, you know, and that actually look is, is pretty good. Yeah. And it's a more modern setup as well. Yeah. You know, you've got the halogen, uh, I think they're uh, LED lights, LEDs. aren't they? I mean, so yeah. everything was LED uh, and it's got more switch gear. You know, it's got a more modern feel about it as well. Okay. So we move on. Do we yeah. move on to the KTM in that case? So that was, again, another big surprise. Yeah. That was like, wow, brand new bike, pretty much. <laughs> you know, for as good as. So less than a thousand miles, yeah. less than nine grand. Yeah. One owner from you, obviously, yeah. and and it's the most modern of all the bikes. You know, fairly modern. You know, it's got all the toys in it, all the gadgets. Uh, you've got quite a presence on the road with it, and it, you know, it, it was comfortable. Very, in fact, it was very comfortable. Out of all three of them, it's probably the best seat. Um, so you felt like you could sit on that and just go for miles. Mm. On the downside, I suppose, if there is a downside, you've got to change down a lot more and get the revs up to overtake compared to the other two, you know, even with the R9, it was quite a, a different bike. Sim similar capacity-ish, but it's just not that same power. And the R9 delivers it differently. Despite its height, 
it was quite stable. It didn't intimidate me or anything. So it doesn't feel top heavy at all, which is you expect with some of the uh, trial bikes that they've mm. got here. Mm. Yeah, the adventure bike style. So yeah, it was an interesting take was those three. It really it surprised me. <laughs> three very, very different choices. I'm glad we ended up with three very, very different bikes. But They were, they were very different, absolutely. Really good surprise. It's been quite an eye opener for me into thinking probably what I don't want. Right. Yeah. And I think it is the KTM. Despite it being as good as it is, it's a lovely bike. I don't think I want an adventure style bike. We should rename this, not what bike next, but not what bike next. <laughs> yeah, good point. When we were riding these roads, yeah. the other two were much better. They were more fun, bigger smile, wow. much bigger smile on Green both factor, of them. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so no smile factor out of a KTM, out of an adventure bike, mm. which leaves us with a hyper naked with a screen. <laughs> <laughs> or a retro naked with some fantastic st sort of semi-adventure styling. Yeah. Which, which, where do we go with the, well, what's next? Are you going to cross off? I do like, and I have been sort of angling towards a more retro style bike. Uh -huh. And uh, I've got to admit the R9, it, it does fit the bill. And it really just felt a nice bike to own. And every bend you come to, it's like, oh yeah, speed up a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> and smiles there, you know, it was, mm. it was really good. Quite literally, the next question is, what, what would you do next? Would you, are you going to go looking for an R9T? Or are you thinking, no, I'm going to go for a test ride on something similar like a, a Speed Twin? The Yamaha is a, it's a brilliant engine. It really is. But I wonder what the triples are like. Mm. MT-09. Yeah. So I might want to have a look at one of those. But I'd still go. I would like to try the other R9, definitely, just to see if it's... It's the, what, like the standard R9? Yeah, the standard one. Just see if it's much different. So rather than choosing your actual night, what bike next, we've kind of narrowed it much, <laughs> much further totally down. Totally narrowed it way. down, absolutely. It really, it really has actually completely narrowed it down. And I know I'm not going to go for uh, a big third bike again, even maybe a sports tour, because I've had the Suzuki GSX mm. as well. And it's a nice bike, but it's not quite there. Um, but the naked ones, it's just like, this has been great. Well, like you said, I mean, I'm glad that we've narrowed it down or focused your mind a little bit more, which is kind of the point as well as just... Oh, I think it's focused me that I need to go for a, a semi-naked type bike. Absolutely. Yeah. Because there's so much fun. Thank <laughs> you so much for um, letting us be part of your next motorcycling journey. It's well, been... it, it was a good test. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased and surprised by what you put up. I've got to get one. I'm sick of not being on two wheels. <laughs> <laughs> got to get back on two wheels. I miss it so much. Good man. You really good, do. You're a great advocate for motorcycling. <laughs> yes, Super you. job. Thank you again. Thank you. Well, there we have it. While we might not have solved Bob's query of what bike next, at least we've narrowed his field of search down. And if he decides to tell us what he does end up with, then I'll put it in the comment section below. Thank you to Pirelli for supporting us with this episode and thank you uh, for joining in as well. If you've got any comments, queries, concerns, thoughts, let us know again just in the comment section. And if you want to be involved in this in another episode, then you must be a Bike Social member and that's dead easy to join up because if you're not already a Bennett's customer, then just go to Bike Social membership on your search function and, and you can sign up. Um, or just send us an email, inquiries at bikesocial.co.uk and we'll see you next time. Well, Bob spent the next two days at his local BMW and Triumph dealerships testing whatever he could get his hands on. He got in touch to say he'd had an offer accepted on a BMW R1250R, saying, I know I've blown my budget. Well done, Bob. Happy travels. Simon. Yes. Action. Simon, Bob. Per permutate. 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 Permeate. Permeate. Thank you so much for joining us on this uh, episode and we look forward to... Let me start again. <laughs> Don't misbehave. <laughs> yeah. There's an expression for that, isn't there? Where you use the wrong word for what you meant. There's a word for that. Stupidity. I'll, I'll post it to you. So, here we are. <laughs>